Good afternoon uh, to you all. My name is uh, Pauline Gidugu, and I am the team leader for the Africa Clean Energy Technical Assistance Facility. We welcome you to this um, launch today. Um, and as we uh, give um, the attendance a few more minutes, we'll be starting at uh, five past, um, so at 2.35. So we'll allow people to come in um, in the next few minutes, and then we start because we do have quite an exciting and um, packed program ahead of us. Um, so let's, we'll, I'll be back to you at uh, 2.35. Thank you. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening once again um, from wherever you're joining us today. Uh, my name is uh, Pauline Gidubu, um, the team leader for the Africa Clean Energy Technical Assistance Facility. And we're really glad that you could join us this afternoon for the launch of the report on the economic impact assessment of VAT and import duty on standalone uh, solar products, specifically for Kenya and for the Kenyan market. Um, before we start, maybe just uh, a few practical um, notes. Um, we do have, um, if you see at the bottom of your screen, uh, a Q&A section. Um, that Q&A section, uh, we encourage you in the course of um, the, the, the presentations that will be made and the discussions that we'll be having to put in your questions in there, which you can directly uh, direct to either a specific um, individual who has presented or to um, a, a general question to uh, regarding um, the, um, the report that we're launching today. 
Um, secondly, the webinar will be recorded, so you'll be able to get um, a copy of, or rather a, a, a link to this um, webinar um, for future reference um, and, and also, um, you know, for you to, to make reference to it. Um, as we start, I'd like to um, uh, do a quick run through um, our program for today. Uh, we, as I mentioned earlier, have uh, quite a packed program and we are quite um, pleased to have a representation uh, present from the Ministry of Energy, um, from Kerea, from Gogla, um, and from the private sector, as well as development partners on the call joining us today. Also joining us today um, will be um, uh, the consultants uh, that the ASTAF program engaged in to support in the work that we'll be launching today. And uh, they'll also be available um, to take up questions about uh, the analysis that they have come up with and the conclusions and recommendations that they have made. Um, so um, just to run through the program quite quickly, um, we start with this welcome, uh, uh, I'll start with a welcome note, um, I'll lead the way and then we will have a few remarks from engineer Kamal Gupta, who is the chair of our career. We'll then be followed by a keynote address um, by the Permanent Secretary of Energy, which will be delivered to us by engineer Kiva, who's already on the call. Uh, and then we'll proceed and uh, have a presentation on the report findings uh, by the, um, uh, the consultants together with our Kenya country manager, Mary Gideinji, and followed thereafter um, by um, the panel discussion in which we will then broadly speak about some of the recommendations that are coming out of the study, as well as some of the emerging issues that still need to be uh, taken into consideration. And then finally, um, we'll have a question and answer session. So we'll hopefully run through the program pretty quickly so that we have time um, for the question and answer session before we conclude. So that's how our agenda is looking um, for this afternoon. Uh, and I'll just dive straight into it in the interest of time um, to just talk about um, the analysis that we've, we've uh, supported to carry out on behalf of the sector. Uh, and this analysis was part of a three uh, part analysis that was conducted on behalf of the uh, standalone solar um, sector, the clean cooking sector and the mini grid sector which overall then together come together as the off-grid sector um, in the eyes of uh, policymakers. Uh, but each of these was carried out separately and will all be um, compiled together as one outlook for the uh, off-grid uh, sector. Um, the question of uh, fiscal incentives and taxation is one that has been um, a top a topic of discussion within the sector over the last couple of years, especially from around 2016 when we began to see changes happening within both the East African uh, Customs Management, uh, East African Community Customs Management Act and the respective uh, VAT Acts in the countries uh, within East Africa. So the question has been one that has continued to, uh, to be top of mind and continued to be a challenge and a barrier um, for, um, the, um, for businesses across not only Kenya, but actually also across Africa. As a program, as um, the Africa Clean Energy Program, we have seen that the very issues that we're grappling with here in Kenya are the same issues that are being grappled with across um, all of Africa and in all the countries, um, and in all the countries that we represent in Africa, we have been uh, taking care of uh, 14 countries across Africa. And it really is the same uh, issues that we're grappling with. Um, so at stake, um, 
what is at stake here is uh, achieving universal access to electricity. This is the thing that is most at stake, even as we talk about fiscal incentives, because it does touch on the issue of affordability and reaching the last mile consumer at a price that they're able to afford. And also, as we look at that, we also have to take cognizance of the fact that there is a balancing act to be, um, to be achieved by governments in balancing revenue collection as well as um, social economic development and productivity for um, its citizens. So with those two things um, weighing on the minds of uh, a lot of stakeholders, um, we have uh, attempted to put this uh, matter to, um, to, we've subjected this matter to an exam and an analysis, and we have come up with uh, some recommendations, uh, which, the, um, which we will delve into uh, much more. Um, I think most importantly, the outcome, the, and for us as a program, what we wish to see uh, as an outcome of this study and these conversations that we're going to have this afternoon is that this will open the door for negotiations between government and uh, private sector. And uh, at the core um, will be certain questions that these negotiations might want to consider. One of the questions might be whether um, exemptions or fiscal incentives can be given for a proposed or a certain timeline or time frame. The second is whether these um, fiscal incentives can be tied to achieving of certain quality standards so that they are then available only for those that have achieved those standards um, and, and therefore uh, also touch on consumer uh, protection. The third is whether they can be pegged on achieving uh, certain goals, um, whether those are electrification goals or whether those are goals that the government has uh, in place and as a policy to be achieved as far as electrification is concerned. And then the fourth may be that also put the private sector um, to uh, account for uh, transparency as far as the benefit is uh, and that the benefit is actually being um, achieved or felt or uh, being um, 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 the benefit actually reaches the end consumer. So the analysis not only provides the evidence, but is also a good tool to support with continued advocacy uh, for the sector. So with those few remarks, I, I want to hand it over to Kamal uh, Gupta, who's the chair of Career, uh, for his opening remarks and then we can proceed um, thereafter with the keynote address. Thank you very much. Over to you, Kamal. Yeah, uh, thank you so very much, uh, Pauline. Really a good startup and a, a very warm welcome to every one of you, those are on the call. A special recognition to engineer Kiva, who has uh, always been a very firm supporter for renewable energy sector. And I always appreciate his support throughout uh, and the entire team of Ministry of Energy who is there with us. Uh, definitely ACE team, Pauline in the leadership of Pauline, then the team of Gogla, uh, Tetra Tech, Mary, a really great job and wonderful team of uh, executive team of uh, Kerea and my esteemed Kerea members and development partners. Uh, this is very, very important uh, forum and platform where we are all there together and opening up our findings and report, which we really prepared with great hard work and uh, uh, full of determination. Because when we started our journey as a renewable energy in early 2010, uh, that time, it was a great uh, synergy and uh, correlation together with the government policies. And we ensure as a private sector to make our alignment 100% with the ministry and with the government. We took that as a, as a challenge for ourselves as a private sector that to achieve the universal access to energy in Kenya as government defined the roadmap. And we were there 
hand by hand and together to make and keep to keep the policies in the same same direction we definitely find an opportunity here to make a, a dialogue and find out the ways and means how we can be more aligned because there is a gap which uh, we are going to discuss in today's uh, meeting and that is where we can see the impact analysis which is primarily uh, just to judge and weigh where we are what we are gaining and what we are losing out of it kenya renewable energy association is an association which is actually representing the private sector and from entire renewable energy uh, we have a concept of a working group as you most of you know and one of the working group is solar home system then solar water heating then biogas and various other technologies so that we could give a clear representation to entire renewable energy sector at a place where they want to take their voice and we are very fortunate and very thankful to the ministry to listen to us to appreciate and to support in all our agendas and ambitions which we are bringing in in the country we are ensuring that we bring values uh, to our people in the form of various research and development aspects the technologies the reliability aspect so that is one of the main and key agenda of kenya renewable energy association and our members are always been uh, fully aligned on that particular aspect i just wanted to share with you the key two key activities which uh, uh, kerea is now uh, on and one of the activities our strategy plan which we are launching we have already shared with uh, with the membership and entire uh, means entire network but at the same time we are going to launch this is for 2021 to 2025 to really ensure that we with the direction of the government and with the with the expectation of the people at large we bring our steps and stands in a very very clear manner so this strategy plan is available and ready we are very soon going to make this public and ensuring that we will take our steps and directions in that way and second point which i also very very excited to share with you that kerea is launching a mobile platform where we are going to engage all the stakeholders as per their expectations and need this is the platform where we are not only uh, sharing the information but at the same time bringing lot of uh, different ideas and inputs to get engage the right quality and right uh, reliability product and plus but the engineers the technicians the uh, probably the skill we brought in we are we were always been very uh, determined to make the capacity building as in one of the agenda for kerea and uh, definitely that is always be known and this platform is going to give the appreciation to all whether it is a product and whether it is a service so uh, further to the topic which we are going to discuss i have uh, already appreciated but i wish to appreciate the team who has done a great job as a uh, solar home system team and uh, working group plus uh, the uh, the development partners and uh, they really compelled to bring a lot of good inputs uh, in the interest of uh, membership at the same time the stakeholders uh, including ministries and uh, the bodies those are actually uh, really need to know such great inputs which are helping them to uh, find the uh, to make a way that what is uh, meaningful for the for the uh, for the people at large and for the government so in this uh, particular way we hope that we will bring values uh, out of this uh, particular debate and discussion please uh, take uh, your please uh, you can even uh, welcome to give your input uh, as we are going to open q and a session uh, which will be very helpful and very meaningful uh, to interact uh, with the bodies those are making uh, some note on this so with this uh, quick uh, welcome to each one of you once again engineer kiva as i mentioned that we appreciate your support and we look forward your support would always been there with us Uh, uh over to the next uh, proceedings and uh, uh, thank you very much everyone again thank you thank you in, thank you kamal um for for that um note um and now i want to welcome um engineer kiva uh, who will give a keynote uh, address on behalf of the permanent secretary um of the state department of energy in kenya karibu sana engineer kiva and as kamal has said always grateful to have your support um with us thank you thank you pauline and uh, 
Good morning, good afternoon, all colleagues who are in the call. Uh, mine is, uh, I need to do this duty to just bring the message of the principal secretary who could not be here with us uh, due to other engagements, but we have discussed uh, with, uh, with him. And there is a commitment from both him and the cabinet secretary that going forward, when we start engaging the parliamentary committees of energy, uh, budget, and also finance, uh, that uh, our cabinet secretary, having been a member of the August House, he has agreed that he will lend support uh, in reaching out and even attending uh, some of the meetings if uh, called uh, when he's available. Uh, and we want to appreciate the esteem who are here, uh, the Google members, uh, Kamal Gupta, Chair of Career, and all the other practitioners, uh, we, we, we appreciate you. And I will just go ahead to read the speech of the principal secretary so that I can be able to communicate what you would have said uh, if you are here. And uh, the PS uh, wanted to uh, say that uh, in, 19, in 2018, the Ministry of Energy launched the Kenya National Electrification Strategy with the goal of all Kenyans having access to electricity in the shortest time possible. The Kenya National Electrification Strategy recognizes that to meet this goal, private sector participation in the delivery of electricity is required. The strategy envisioned that electrification in some parts of the country will not be reached by the grid and that of the products such as the standalone solar, solar and mini grids will be utilized as part of the energy mix to reach the more difficult areas. However, the country has been undergoing a difficult period with COVID-19 pandemic. Last year, the government reinstated taxes on renewable energy technologies. In particular, the Finance Act 2020 introduced value added tax on standalone solar products. While at the East African community, there was introduction of import duty on these products. The Ministry of Energy recognizes that these two taxes directly impact on the affordability of the standalone products. While the Ministry appreciates the impact of, on the sector, it is important to also recognize that our country is undergoing a difficult period and there is an urgent need to raise revenue for the country to meet all its obligations at the national level. The ministry has been working together with stakeholders to address these two taxes, not just on standalone system, but also mini grids and clean cooking solutions. Specifically, the ministry has continued to engage with the teams working with the Kenya Renewable Energy Association, Kerea, to undermine economic impact assessments of these taxes on each of the three subsectors. Today, the Ministry congratulates you all as we unveiled the first of the three studies which the sector has been undertaking on the economic impact of VAT and import duty on the access to renewable energy technologies, uh, which focuses on standalone system. Uh, we acknowledge that the study has been undertaken in collaboration with our stakeholders and has reviewed how these taxes impact on access to standalone solar products. The key findings from the study bring a new impetus to the ministry and indeed the whole sector to enhance our representation of the industry position on these taxes to other government bodies and entities. I would like to just uh, touch on a couple of the key findings. Namely, one, Kenya might not meet the universal uh, access to electricity before 2030 due to the factor of both the increase in taxes and also the effects of COVID-19, and that the VAT exemptions from solar uh, standalone products would result in a net cost to treasury of around Kenya shillings 1.4 billion per year, and, but it would generate over Kenya shillings 4.32 billion in annual benefits from corporate taxes and other economic activity. The two findings really go to the heart of the matter that our dream to achieve universal access to electricity is at risk. The ministry will continue to champion universal access to electricity and will continue to work with industry to meet the objectives stated in the Kenya National Electrification Strategy. Uh, in our strategy, 
we had envisaged that uh, 1.9 million households would be met with standalone system. And we will therefore be more creative to see how best we can serve this household. The Ministry of Energy is happy to receive the result findings of the impact of VAT, the impact duty on standalone solar products. We recognize that more needs to be done to support the industry to deliver standalone products to the 1.9 million households. As our standalone solar industry is growing, we recognize that the industry requests to have the VAT exemption reinstated for about 10 years and to have a regulatory impact assessment carried out after that to determine whether to keep or remove this fiscal incentive. This is a good request which we will support. Uh, finally, let me say that we are happy to have supported the industry on this research report. And today we are proud to be involved in the launch of the same. We thank the organizations who have contributed to the success of this report, namely Kerea, Dobla, Africa Clean Energy Technical Assistance Facility, STAF. Congratulations to you all on this report. I now declare the report launched and the forum open for further deliberations and the findings of this report. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Engineer Kiva. We appreciate those kind words and the support of the ministry uh, and the support um, that you have also, you know, um, elaborated from the principal secretary. Uh, apologies, I called him permanent secretary on, on two occasions. I think I'm still in the analog age, um, but the principal secretary's uh, a, a kind uh, support as well as the cabinet uh, secretary based on his uh, previous um, 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 experience uh, as a lawmaker. So we really appreciate um, the support. And I think without further ado, uh, as the uh, report has been launched, we want to just dive straight into the presentation on the report findings. Uh, and thereafter, we will have a session on Q&A. So do um, prepare your questions as earlier indicated, drop them in the Q&A section uh, part of the box. Um, sorry, at the bottom of your screen, you have a Q&A uh, section. Please utilize that section to, to put in your questions. Uh, as I, I think we will have quite a lot of um, things coming out of this report, we will probably focus more on those questions that we will find uh, posted um, under the Q&A se session. So over to you, uh, Mary, to introduce the team that has worked on, um, on the report and to go ahead and uh, present the findings of the report. Thank you. Thank you, Pauline, and thank you, Engineer Keeper. We greatly appreciate um, your support and the comments that you've made. Um, my name is Mary Githinji. I am the country manager for Kenya and Somalia in the ASTAR program. And I've been working with uh, two gentlemen who are asked to introduce themselves to develop the, the report, uh, the economic impact assessment on standalone solar products, um, and, and how they are affected by the VAT and import duty that was uh, instituted last year. Uh, Kirago and Ed, please go ahead and introduce yourselves. Let's start with Kirago. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, good morning, uh, others. My name is Kira Gwashira. I'm a lawyer and public policy consultant, uh, and I was involved in uh, this uh, study, and thank you so much, and good to see all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Kiragu. Ed? Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Ed Day. I've been working with uh, Kiragu and Mary for the last, uh, gosh, six, six months or so on this project, um, focused on the um, economic impact assessment and modeling, um, which we've been developing in, the, in a number of countries, but um, we've done quite a deep dive for Kenya and looking forward to presenting those results uh, shortly. Great, thank you both. Um, so I'm just going to start by telling you that the, the study um, findings we are presenting today really go into showing the impact of the imposition of VAT and import duty on standalone solar products. 
Um, and the study was a collaborative effort. It was done, um, we worked together with the Kenya Renewable Energy Association. And we also worked with, um, you may want to go to the next slide, please. Thank you. Yeah, we also worked with Gogla and we were quite well supported by the Ministry of Energy. Um, the objectives of the study were to provide a social economic impact assessment on the introduction of VAT and import duties on standalone solar products. Now, as uh, Pauline had mentioned uh, earlier, this is one of three studies that we have, um, that, that are being undertaken on behalf of Kerea. Next slide, please. And the two other studies are um, an impact assessment, a similar impact assessment on uh, the mini grid sector, which is led by the Africa Mini Grid Developers Association. And there's another one uh, on clean cooking sector because the, the taxes also affect that sector. And that's being led by the Clean Cooking Association of Kenya. We have been heavily supported by a large group of uh, organizations, namely Power Africa, uh, Africa Enterprise Challenge Fund, SNV, and the Green Mini Grid Facility. And all these organizations are working to support or under the umbrella of Kerea. Thank you. Kirago, and I think you want to go to the next slide. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I don't know why we are not able to see the, um, the information in, yeah, good, that's, thanks so much. So here we're just looking at a, a summary of uh, the report and, and the information that we gathered. And we just looked at uh, the impact of uh, two major uh, taxes, uh, the VAT and uh, the import duty. Uh, and so what we uh, came up, I mean, what we realized, one, is that um, the government revenue is about 29 million US dollars from um, import duties and uh, VAT. For import duties is about 16 million USD and for VAT is about 13 million USD. And so we realize that um, even if that is the revenue that the government would get by imposing those two taxes, um, if it forwent that tax, then the impact of uh, maintaining uh, exemption on, on the taxes one would be creation of about 640,000 jobs um, um, I mean, and, and support to different households. Um, uh, um, uh, sorry, not jobs, uh, reaching out to households by 2025. It will create about 3,600 uh, jobs uh, in the SAS uh, value chain. And these are both the very formal jobs there and the medium formal jobs and the, the informal jobs. Then it will be able to create about 65 to 100 million uh, USD per year in terms of economic livelihood support. This would uh, mainly be dealing with uh, whether it's a uh, generation of income, uh, setting up of new businesses. Uh, it would also result in an uh, increase in uh, study hours for students, about 2.5 million study hours, uh, mainly because of uh, the areas that we are targeting generally are off grid. And so most of the children there, they would certainly rely on uh, the ACS products for their studies and lighting uh, needs. Then it also contributes to reduction in uh, carbon emission, about 20,000 tons, and also reduction in expenditure that uh, would be spent in, on other, other energy sources, for example, paraffin and other unclean, uh, unclean energy, which by and large would be about 65 million uh, US dollars. So in the next slide, we were able to see the coverage uh, that the country has in terms of uh, access to grid and off-grid solar, and also the impact then that that would have briefly. So we see one, one of the things is that uh, the rural areas in this country, about 30% depend on uh, solar system uh, and about 26% of that population generally. So that's, that is one indicator that uh, most of the rural and unreached areas would by and large be dependent on uh, of off grid uh, uh, solar. Now the counties that have been targeted by government um, that dealing with the access to off-grid solar, the 23% of that population do not have a, uh, has access, only 23% has access to the grid solar. So about 77% do not have access to that. And some of those counties, for example, Trukana County, only 8%, 8.7% has access to grid electricity. So that is a good indication at how 
uh, that uh, how the solar system then goes into supporting these counties which have very minimal access uh, to the, the grid solar energy. But then also we realized that about 23.7% of uh, the population in those counties uh, certainly rely on uh, the lighting energy from mainly wood and, and paraffin, which is about 4.3%. And finally, we then realize that uh, the same counties that have low access to grid energy and electricity are also ranked amongst the most poor countries. I mean, poor counties. So by and large, then we notice that there is a correlation between poverty levels and of course, low access and low availability of, uh, of uh, grid, so, uh, grid energy. And therefore then the reason why we're talking about the need to facilitate the access to, uh, to electricity uh, through the solar system. So for the next slide, we just then uh, note, uh, look briefly at the trajectory uh, that the VAT has uh, uh, been applied across various, uh, I mean, across the SES product, uh, um, starting from the 2013, when we had a zero rated um, uh, for the um, zero rate for the uh, SES product. Then in 2013, we just noticed that uh, the VAT was applied to the products, but then a year later, the VAT uh, exemption on specific solar products was applied. And that has been uh, 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 apl applicable even up to 2018, when more specific uh, details were elaborated. And then 2020, we just noted in terms of um, with the reduction in terms of the, the rate because of the COVID uh, support. But uh, what we are looking at in this study is that uh, last year, the Finance Act amended the VAT Act uh, to bring on, uh, to remove the tax exemptions for SES products. And that's what now we are looking at in this uh, study. What then has that, what impact has that caused uh, to uh, the industry? But also we will also be looking at the impact of uh, the removal of uh, import duty exemptions for the SES products. The next uh, slide. Yeah, so what, but what we also recognize is that uh, VAT is a, a, a reliable source of uh, income to government. I think it's very good for us to recognize that. About 22% of uh, government revenue is contributed from the VAT, both uh, local VAT import, um, I mean, and, and import VAT. So we certainly acknowledge that amongst the tax uh, revenue sources for government, VAT is one of them. And so even as we talk about uh, the need to cushion the SES products and uh, sector, we do recognize that a VAT is one of the critical sources. The next slide. And, 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 and then finally, then uh, Ed will, 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 will come on board. Just to look at uh, historically, the, we have had conversations on the need for maintaining socioeconomic uh, support I mean, and physical support to the SES products and the sector uh, and through mainly tax exemptions. And there are certain benefits, and that's part of what we'll be, we're looking at in this study that historically have been realized in the country by maintaining uh, tax exemptions. And some of them include, for example, access to energy. And we just noted that increasing access to energy to the households, then reduction of uh, consumption of uh, the unclean energy, for example, supporting uh, education sector, supporting health sector, reducing carbon emissions. And also we noted that uh, in this industry, it is still maturing, as especially in this country. And so maintaining support to the uh, in industry that is still at the infant stage is obvious uh, fundamental in guaranteeing that uh, the sector continues generating the benefits to both government and the communities while of course enjoying certain fiscal support. And I think that is what we're looking at. Um, yeah, next slide. Yeah, so then Ed, my, my colleague will, will come on board. Thank you. Thanks, Kiragu. Um, so just to say this is, um, it's the first time that a detailed assessment of, of, a, of, a, of a specific batch change in Kenya has been undertaken um, uh, in terms of impact on the standalone solar market, but it's by no means the first and there is now um, a very recent but growing literature in, on, on, on the impact of various fiscal incentives on um, standalone solar sector development and the outcomes that it, um, that it delivers. Um, I won't dwell on this slide, but it's just to say you know, there, are, there are quite a few um, precedents that this um, analysis 
uh, builds on and extends, um, including, um, I guess the bolded one there is um, a study by Duke University in 2019 um, that looked um, explicitly at trying to um, model the reaction of um, demand from households for solar home systems um, to changes in prices. Um, and that's, you know, there's, there's lots of fantastic studies out there that, that this one builds on. Um, but in the interest of time, maybe let's skip to the next slide. Um, I think what we've seen in, in Kenya is certainly over the last five years, a relatively stable market um, of around 1 million um, units sold each year, recorded by, um, by Gogla from its uh, affiliate members. Um, there was a definite dip at the beginning um, of, should we say, the first half of, yeah, down 11% and um, compared to the first half of 2019 um, in the first half of sales in 2020, um, uh, uh, you know, undoubtedly related to the emergence of um, uh, COVID and uncertainty. Um, uh, so, so I guess what we have in the following slides is, um, has to be taken in the context of a historically relatively stable, still growing sector, um, but nonetheless one that is facing uh, quite a lot of uncertainty, um, and not only because of um, the reintroduction of VAT um, in the last year or so. Um, so let's get on to the next section where we're going to look at impacts. Um, there's, uh, as Kiragi mentioned on a previous slide, there are a lot of impacts um, uh, of access to standalone solar technologies. We won't have time to talk about all of them. So we've um, picked some of the, the headline messages um, for, from our modeling and, and we'll summarize those here. Um, the main one um, and the biggest conclusion um, uh, to take away from today's presentation is uh, the one on this slide, um, which is essentially looking at a um, reasonable growth trajectory for the sector based um, both on energy access targets, but also um, historic sales volumes. Um, you know, we think it's it's plausible that the sector would be able to reach um, uh, just over 4.2 million households in the next five years um, in a scenario represented by that orange line um, where there were no um, uh, no imposition of VAT nor import duties. Um, and that's almost our starting point is to then think about um, what happens uh, when VAT is then um, charged on standalone solar products uh, and or import duties. Um, how much is that going to affect the reach of those products um, in terms of uh, uh, you know, beneficiary households. Um, and the, the key message on this slide is um, VAT would reduce um, reach by about 450,000 households. Um, uh, VAT and import duties would um, uh, uh, reduce reach by 2025 by um, 600,000 households. So it's it's certainly not trivial. We're not talking small numbers. We're talking, you know, 600,000 households. Um, that's, uh, what is that? Um, almost 3 million people um, uh, with an average household size of about four people per household um, would have uh, would not have access to a solar product they would otherwise have access to um, as a result of um, uh, VAT and import duties being charged. Um, that alone, I think, is is enough of a reason to already be thinking and um, uh, making a case for for for, for tax exemptions. Um, but as we'll see in the next few slides, there's some um, uh, additional impacts that we can um, quantify that, that that help make that case. So if we move on to the next slide. Um, one of the uh, key underpinning um, bits of analysis and uh, findings from actually some previous work that SNV and um, Korea did surveying um, industry members um, in late 2020 um, is that introduction of taxes on a product like a solar home system or, or, or a small Pico product um, destined for um, typically not a very high ability to pay uh, market is that most of those that 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 increase in 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 cost is going to be passed on to um, consumers and um, so almost all companies uh, already have reported um, uh, increasing prices as a result of VAT um, so from the perspective of reaching um, often uh, poor and marginalized communities um, it, it's obviously going to make that um, uh, endeavor much harder um, when essentially the um, uh, the increase in VAT is going to be added on to uh, end user prices. Um, that might look very different on other products where there's um, a much more um, elastic demand of a high end market uh, for luxury goods. Um, and I guess the point um, uh, broadly this slide is trying to make is um, that's not the context we're in, even if um, it's true that the standalone solar sector has you know, a good 10 years of history in, in, in Kenya now and is, um, has, has achieved relatively stable um, sales over the last five years. It's nonetheless serving a market that is, that is very sensitive to, um, to pricing. So if we move on to the next slide. 
Uh, that's confirmed by um, our engagement on this project, which um, confirmed that we've seen um, retail prices going up by, you know, 10 to 25 percent in a relatively short period. Um, uh, sales volumes and uh, customer subscriptions uh, are falling. Um, I guess the other thing which um, we haven't mentioned on this slide, but is um, certainly happening in response to uh, the introduction of VAT is um, both increasing prices um, and addressing that by uh, elongating payment terms for pay-as-you-go products, um, which um, is tempting to think addresses the problem by uh, instead of asking a, a household to pay back over 18 months, allowing them to pay back over 24 or 36 months um, at the same monthly fee. Um, but it does increase, uh, you know, that's quite a significant impact on effectively indebtedness um, and burden of households who, who are now facing either an increase in their monthly payments or a much longer payment um, period before they're free of, um, uh, of that repayment plan. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so now getting into the guts of, um, you know, okay, 600,000 or 450,000 fewer people with VAT and 600,000 fewer people with import duties, uh, households rather uh, having access to standalone solar products. Um, what does that translate into in terms of uh, quantifiable economic impacts? Um, well, the first thing is, um, as engineer um, Kiva pointed out at the beginning of the presentation, um, uh, going from a situation of uh, exemptions represented by the orange bars to charging VAT and or charging uh, import duties undoubtedly does come at a cost to treasury. Um, so our analysis this finds that um, uh, you know putting in place uh, reinstating the VAT um, exemptions would uh, come at a cost of about 13 million US dollars per year to Treasury and another 16 million um, if the import duties were fully removed. Um, uh, that is quite a lot. So you know, 13 million dollars is I think 1.4 billion um, Kenyan shillings each year. So it's you know we don't we don't want to start from a situation of um, uh, claiming that's trivial and easy. And in the context of COVID, um, there is obviously a need to 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 raise tax revenues. Um, so the question here is you know what is what is that being traded off against? Um, and as we'll see on the next few slides. Um, it's not only achieving access for 600,000 households, it's achieving impacts which, um, you know, more than justify um, that foregone revenue. So if we move on to the next slide, what are the benefits that um, uh, that foregone tax revenue would achieve? Um, next slide, please. Uh, so the first and um, uh, I, th I think possibly the most important one is um, stimulating a sector which is continuing to grow um, and offers really important uh, employment opportunities. Um, so uh, uh, I guess what is not shown on the graph but is shown on the box at the bottom, um, the VAT exemptions uh, would, uh, 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 by um, uh, encouraging growth of the sector, um, be supporting an additional 2,500 full-time jobs um, by 2025. Um, with import duties uh, exemptions in place as well, that would increase, I think, three and a half um, uh, thousand full-time jobs, um, often at skilled levels in the value chain, uh, but also unskilled and in communities where um, where employment opportunities are, are scarce. Um, and those jobs would also be contributing uh, direct income taxation um, of, um, in the case of VAT exemptions, about $1.7 uh, million per year. So that already offsets some of the cost to Treasury um, of providing the exemptions, and it will stimulate other forms of taxation, and particularly income taxes um, and potentially corporation tax as well as, as the sector continues to grow. If we move on to the next slide, um, and this is... Um, didn't come first, but it's probably the most important um, uh, finding we have in terms of impacts. Um, so the um, VAT exemptions represented by that middle blue bar um, would result in um, uh, uh, you know, 450,000 households having access to a standalone solar product that wouldn't otherwise have had. Um, and a uh, proportion of those households will be able to use that product to support either a new business, um, uh, expanding the business hours of existing work, and um, taking on second jobs and diversifying their their economic earnings potential. Um, and that impact is worth um, you know up to seventy million dollars uh, a year. And um, that's the difference between the orange and the blue bar um, in the twenty twenty five uh, part of the present of the slide you're looking at. Um, similarly, import duties would 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 um, increase that impact. Um, and if we think back to 
comparing that to the thirteen million dollars of uh, uh, tax revenue foregone, um, that would be unlocking you know up to seventy million dollars of um, uh, economic activity for communities. So clearly, from a CBA perspective, um, it's it's bang for your buck. Um, uh, that's not to say um, that the you know it's it's unimportant to collect um, tax revenue for governments. So if you move on to the next slide. Okay, there's then, um, uh, I guess, an important point here. This slide is focused on women, um, but you, we, you know, I think we can expand it to um, uh, vulnerable communities as well. Um, the standalone soda sector um, uh, it reaches, uh, in terms of who uses these products, it is often uh, women um, in, in the home. Um, so it provides important economic activities that are gonna um, uh, focus women, uh, uh, on women more than on men in terms of the way they're gonna be used. Um, it's also gonna be in communities where there are very limited employment opportunities. Um, so in terms of being able to achieve um, social outcomes and socioeconomic objectives, um, uh, the users of standalone solar products are often those who, who most need access to um, uh, economic opportunities. Um, similarly, in the middle section, women uh, represent a, a relatively high share of jobs compared to other um, economic sectors um, in the value chain. Um, and that's, um, I expect, growing as um, the PAYGO model rolls out and um, agent networks uh, are often including a high proportion of, of women employed uh, in distribution. Um, uh, and those, are, as the bottom two boxes um, say, uh, represent really important access to information, communication technologies, um, and an ability to um, develop an entrepreneurial spirit um, and opportunities for women uh, and also for, 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 for vulnerable communities. So the distribution of where these impacts um, that we've talked about um, matters as well. Um, if we move on to the next slide, I think I'm nearly there. Um, I'll skip over this one really quickly. Um, access to solar home systems or, um, obviously reduces um, expenditure and use of other um, uh, uh, energy access technologies. So there's um, a saving for households in terms of what they would have otherwise spent on other products. Um, that's not always going to be, um, I guess, net in that it's also possible that people spend more on a solar home system than they would have on an alternative technology. Um, so we move on to the next slide. Um, there's other impacts that we haven't uh, presented in monetized terms here, although they could be. Um, uh, clean technologies um, reduce indoor air pollution where they're um, replacing um, burning of kerosene or wood for um, lighting or heating. Um, it would improve access to education um, for children by having access to good lighting in the evenings um, and would also reduce um, uh, harmful greenhouse gas emissions. Um, in our model, the VAT exemptions alone would reduce um, uh, emissions by about 20,000 um, tonnes of CO2 per year, um, which um, already sounds like a lot. If you turn that into a monetary value using a global carbon price, that's about a million dollars a year as well. Um, so really significant, um, we're talking about significant savings, uh, which are value to the environment um, uh, and uh, often are uh, not taken into consideration. And I think we might be nearly there. Or have I got one more slide? There we go. Recommendations. I'm going to hand back over to um, to Kiragu. Thanks, uh, thanks, Ed. Let uh, now having looked at uh, the impact, the benefits, and the sector uh, setup, we then uh, made critical recommendations, and the industry uh, did uh, recommend the following four critical areas. Uh, to be able to unlock the challenges that uh, the SES sector is facing. One is to reinstate uh, the tax exemptions, because as you have seen from the report, the benefits certainly outweigh the revenue that is generated. And because the benefits are cutting across the different uh, social and economic sectors, uh, targeting different social groups, and, and, and certainly have a wider far reaching benefits to the government and to the society as a whole. Uh, the second recommendation uh, is that uh, the import duties still be, uh, I mean, the exemptions on import duties need to be uh, reinstated and maintained and structured for the long term. But this we recognize that needs to be a conversation engaged through the East African Customs Union. Customs Union. And then uh, to government to continue supporting the SAS sector uh, to achieve the universal access uh, through additional fiscal strategies. As we have noted, the critical counties, about 22 counties, or even more than 22 counties, uh, do benefit from the solar products. Uh, and if we would like to maintain access to energy in those counties, then we need to provide even further fiscal strategies to the industry and to the consumers of their solar products. And finally, we did uh, recognize, and some of the industry players uh, indicated that uh, other fiscal incentives would be very critical 
to support processing and assembly of uh, product and manufacturing of SES products locally, which obviously would be a critical center for export of those products within East Africa and, and the rest of Africa. And so the, the uh, critical recommendation is to go further beside the VAT and import duty uh, exemptions to think through other fiscal incentives that we can support the industry uh, through. So those are the four critical uh, strategies. Uh, the next slide is um, a, a summary of what we have just um, uh, been discussing about the critical benefits. So what we'll be looking at here is the benefits uh, specifically from the VAT. Uh, we had already looked at the benefits for both VAT and, uh, and, uh, uh, and input duty. And so for VAT, we just noted that uh, the government generates 13 million, but then the benefits are as uh, indicated there. So I'd like to pause at that, uh, then just leave this slide there. So then we can have questions and comments. Thank you so much. Back to you, you. Uh, Pauline. Yes, thank you very much, Kirago. I think, um, and thank you, Ed, and thank you, Mary. Um, the the findings of this study there is a lot that we can really take out of this um and and so what i'd like us to do is um in the interest of time to just move quickly to uh, a panel session um, and engineer Kiva we want to start this session with you um, obviously there's a lot of interest in Kenya as a country because Kenya has been a pace setter in the off-grid uh, space and has made uh, a lot of strides so in establishing the 2018 uh, national Kenya national electrification strategy which which was referred to in the principal secretary's speech what considerations did the ministry make on affordability of standalone solar and other renewable technologies and the appropriate role of fiscal policy towards the same? So that's, that's one large question. Um, as you digest that question, also let us know how does the ministry view the introduction of VAT and import duty uh, especially regarding reaching universal access, um, uh, which was a goal of uh, the, 20, the 2018 uh, electrification strategy and how this impacts on uh, COSAP. So quite a number of questions in there, um, but I, I over to you, engineer. Thank you, Pauline. Uh, I'll be short sure to leave time for others because I know uh, we have uh, talked before uh, when we are presenting the PS uh, uh, speech. And indeed, as you refer to the 2018 uh, time when we launched the National Electrification Strategy, uh, you see it was underpinned by looking at the least cost option of uh, serving the those people are not served. We are comparing how much it is going to cost if we are going to extend electricity in some areas, uh, there will be no grid nearby. We need to extend some medium voltage lines, good step down transformers. Uh, but uh, then looking at uh, the solar home system, which has uh, grown, it's a lot of innovation. Uh, and then looking at uh, the price at that time, uh, then it was felt that it is uh, more, more, it's more viable uh, not to commit uh, government resources in doing long line lines where there is not uh, much uh, uh, demand because uh, some of those areas, uh, it's true industries are going to come, but uh, the immediate need now is to be able to get uh, uh, electricity uh, for, for social needs, for productive use also, yes, uh, for education, for health uh, and such. And, and therefore, uh, looking at that then, if we are going to load uh, other inputs uh, on, on the cost of the technology and the service itself, then it starts tilting uh, the equation uh, and you may find that uh, then it is a bit harder to be able to provide this service. 
and uh, uh, much you that uh, even in our grid extension, uh, nowadays you have the last mile connectivity program where customers are really not paying for the full cost of connection, but the government is extending the service uh, just like any infrastructure service. And the customer only meets the last uh, mile, uh, just a drop uh, and the connection uh, fee. Uh, and therefore for us, we view the introduction of uh, these taxes as negating our, our, our objectives and delaying our, uh, our reaching of the goal of universal electrification. That's why we are supporting very much this uh, study because it is going to give us uh, the, the, the real momentum, the real numbers to be able to engage uh, with other parties, particularly uh, those at the National Treasury and also those at the Kenya National Assembly and the Senate, if needs be. Uh, so that's, that's our take, and uh, we, we really would like uh, this, uh, uh, this wave so that majority of our people who live in those underserved counties who are not also as economically endowed, majority of them, like the people are living in grid sub areas, can also enjoy this service. And that, that way we'll be extending equity into all the areas. Thank you, Pauline. Thank you very much. Um, I think then it is uh, evident that the, the discussion, the topic we are having affects you very much uh, as much as it affects the rest of the sector because there is um, it there is a tie um, with uh, the uh, achievement of um, of of the goals uh, of course up of uh, um, uh, access to all uh, electrification uh, as well as uh, uh, now Sneha um, yourself um, because we, we didn't introduce you earlier uh, and as you introduce yourself the question we have for you is what has been the greatest impact to the sector the introduction of uh, both VAT and input and what trends are we seeing in the growth of the market since yeah, thanks, uh, Pauline. Um, uh, so yeah, I run uh, Azure Technologies here in uh, East Africa. So, you know, I, I experience things uh, firsthand, uh, but also uh, very much part of the Keria team uh, leading the S uh, Small Home Systems Working Group uh, together with uh, Rahab from uh, MCOPA. Um, and uh, I mean, just to say as much as, you know, we've seen these challenges, um, these challenges have actually brought uh, the, the industry together and, and, you know, working very closely between the different uh, competitors, but also the, the stakeholders, um, including your, yourselves, Gogla, and of course, the Ministry of Energy. Um, and uh, as, a, as a matter of uh, coming together, um, as well as the VAT challenge, um, uh, the other challenge that we had uh, last year, as everyone remembers, is uh, in terms of the lockdowns and uh, treating our sector as essential services provider. Uh, and I'm glad to say that uh, uh, after the, the lockdowns again, uh, we've, uh, uh, thanks to the Ministry of Energy and especially Engineer Kiva, we got the same status. So I hope uh, you know, all the companies can at least uh, address that challenge. Uh, but coming back to the VAT and uh, import duty. Um, so yeah, the, the impact that we saw, uh, absolutely, uh, we've seen the prices increase uh, as has been um, uh, mentioned in your report uh, to the tune of uh, between uh, 10 to 20%. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, sales and demand, uh, I would say it was actually quite fluctuating and, and driven by different factors. Um, so, uh, and also um, to one angle uh, affected by the lockdown. So for example, uh, last year when the lockdowns happened um, and schools closed, we saw a big uh, increase uh, in, the, in the TV sales. Uh, but I think that was quite short lived as, as what we've seen. Um, and then also in terms of product mix, um, and I know that there's different bodies uh, who are reporting uh, the, the, the sales progression. And I think we need to be very careful how that is looked at so that it's not giving the wrong impression because certainly what we've seen um, in the market is um, the product mix is changing. 
in terms of, yes, volumes may be rising, but uh, much more of the, the low end products, which is not uh, ideally what we want uh, in, in terms of, uh, you know, um, giving the right uh, uh, access and evolution uh, to the rural markets. Uh, and then also we need to be careful that we only not look at the sales data because um, a bulk of the market now has transitioned from being retail to pay as you go. So as much as you might have a high uptick in, in initial sales, the, the, the key metric for companies to survive and, and uh, make it sustainable is to make sure that uh, the customers are able to repay. And certainly something that we've seen um, uh, with the introduction of the VAT and prices going up, that the repayment rates have actually come down. Um, so overall, what we're seeing in the sector is, is quite uh, um, you know, in line with what has been uh, shown in the, in the recent uh, report that's been uh, launched. Thank you, Sneha. I think I, I also hear from you that, um, um, of course, we have to look at the numbers um, with a pinch of salt. But I think what I have heard clearly from you is one that affordability continues to be a challenge. And that's why perhaps more people are uh, turning towards pay as you go. Um, but then also that there has been an, an increase in um, in um, repayment um, um, defaults, uh, which shows that there is a struggle, um, even at that lower market segment. And that also um, the other side of the coin from what you're saying is that I think there is a growing acceptance of uh, solar products, whether they be low end or more high end as, as a means of electrification. And these are the good things that we need to leverage or uh, to continue to grow the sector and to continue to have an impact. Um, so now I want to turn to you, uh, Patrick. Um, and Patrick, again, you will introduce yourself um, and, uh, and as you introduce yourself, I'd like you to let us know how did the sector benefit during the time when there were tax exemptions on solar equipment? Um, because this, uh, what we are talking about here is a reintroduction uh, of, uh, of taxes from a regime when we didn't have um, these taxes before. And from your perspective, how important are fiscal incentives? Over to you, Patrick. Thank you very much, Pauline, and thank you for, um, to everybody for getting us to this point. Um, my name is Patrick Tonui. I'm the head of policy and regional strategy at Gogla. Um, I think for us as a sector, the presence of uh, fiscal incentives, when we look at our sales data and when we look at all the markets that our members are working on, we've, historically we've seen um, that East Africa and Kenya have been far ahead in terms of the maturity of their markets, um, in terms of the impact and the penetration of the sector, in terms of the sales and the, the contribution that the governments were seeing in off-grid towards the energy access plans. And other regions in Southern Africa, in West Africa, have been asking um, us and looking at why is uh, the East African market doing better than the other markets and what policies should they emulate that happened in East Africa that would also help them stimulate and see growth in their markets. And the core that we see is the policy decision going back to 20, 2004 that East Africa did to have um, duty and VAT exemptions for the sector. I think that is one of the underpinning things why East Africa has been far ahead. And I think when we look at Kenya has also been the openness to international investment for companies to come in and pilot and test their products out. Um, I think those uh, factors today have led to Kenya being, um, you know, one of the, you know, it's been one of the top markets for a number of years um, for our sector. We've seen in terms of the level of competition and the number of companies that are working in this sector um, in Kenya has been really, you know, I, I think been a poster child that other countries would probably try and emulate. And I think that policy framework that I think historically has really been strong in Kenya has seen the fact that now Kenya has a really commendable results in terms of number of sales and number of households, the level of investment and the number of companies. And, and even when we look at um, the results in terms of investments coming into the sector and where most of that investment 
has been coming into has been here. And really it's been underpinned by a strong enabling fiscal environment. I think we need to recognize for our sector that affordability is key. Um, companies have been able to go where they see they can reach their customers and their customers can afford uh, the products. And I think the decision last year has undermined that. We've already seen some indications from the survey that SNV did last year that companies were beginning to look at their investment decisions for Kenya, um, which, which is not, I think, what we want to see. And also, I think, as indicated, some of the impacts on sales. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Patrick. Um, I think we continue to just have a really keen eye on uh, how, how this is impacting the sector. And of course, the work that has been going on with Gogla and, um, and Kerea uh, continues to just, um, you know, contribute to the, the body of knowledge on, on what's actually happening to the sector and how, and how that impact is. Um, I'd like to turn to you, Ed, um, and um, thank you for the presentation and the very clear analysis on, on, on the impact that we are seeing. So when undertaking the in, uh, economic assessment, what were the most surprising impacts that you found and why does this in, information matter? And as I ask you that question, I also want to take um, the question that is in the chat box, which if you could answer together with that ask question I'm asking you. Um, and, and this is, did the study consider the purchasing power of the potential beneficiaries of these standalone solar products in calculating the economic benefits? So two questions, uh, over to you, Ed. Thanks, Pauline. And I, I might go backwards and answer the, the second question first. Um, uh, so, did, did did the study take into account um, ability to pay or affordability? Uh, yes, it does. Um, and so, what um, the study has this, that within the model, there's a few sensitivities that we did. Um, one is to use an established demand response um, from previous studies, um, uh, and the second is to construct a um, demand curve based on ability to pay of um, uh, of Kenyan populations. Um, and that is actually the, the results that you're seeing today are presented based on the latter. Um, they came out relatively consistent, so it wouldn't change the headline messages. Um, but what I think I would say is um, uh, if you follow that line of thinking um, uh, much further, um, what this analysis would also show is that if you um, talk about the COSAP counties, the, the most um, underserved uh, counties in Kenya, um, the um, reduction in ability to pay will be much larger than what we've presented at a national level here. Um, so you could disaggregate this and start thinking about, you know, for specific target populations or specific regions, um, using the same um, tool and the same data that we've used, um, the impact on ability to pay would, would, would be larger in some communities than in others. Um, so as a short answer, yes, it does. As a long answer, um, yeah, you could unpick that into lots of interesting results. Um, what did I find most surprising, the, the first question, um, I think is the um, magnitude of the economic uplift or the potential. Um, and I would echo um, some of the previous comments that um, uh, lots of these results are, when presented at an aggregate level, um, need to be taken with a pinch of salt. And um, there's certainly lots of sensitivities around them. Um, but I think just the, you know, access to energy is a worthy goal in and of itself. Um, beyond that, the ability to stimulate economic activity in rural regions uh, where, where you know, jobs are needed is um, a potentially a really significant boost uh, uh, to, to an economic growth path for Kenya. Um, and what I will say, um, just to build on that, is that the impacts we've presented are really on the basis of an individual household having access to a system. I think when you think about achieving the SDG 7 targets of universal access and a Kenya that, you know, everybody has access to reliable energy and is interconnected, has access, we're not talking about just access to electricity, but access to information and communications technology, um, to appliances, to an ability to run small businesses. Um, I think what we've presented today shows just the beginning of how important that can be um, in its own right as a justification for, for supporting that um, continued and widened access to, to, um, to electricity and the package of services that come with it. Yeah, I, I think sometimes our, our heads are so much in, uh, you know, in the weeds that we actually don't 
see some of those that look like obvious things and and you know i'm listening to you and thinking yeah actually i've, I've never really thought about it as the potential for economic uplift uh, although we talk about it all the time, we talk about access to electricity, we talk about uh, education, we talk about healthcare, we talk about agriculture and productive use and economic activities, but then put together, uh, you know, the potential for an economic uplift. So we're not just talking about a product, we are talking about the potential, you know, for economic um, turn around in some situations. Uh, we are talking about the difference between uh, food security or not. Uh, we're talking about, you know, um, just different aspects of um, off grid, standalone solar uh, products. So that's a really interesting insight. And I, and I, and I believe, you know, as we, as we continue to have this conversation, uh, around uh, the off-grid sector, that that would be a, a, a really important consideration to be put on the forefront. Um, so now I have one more question for you, Engineer Kiva. Um, you have indicated that uh, you might not really stay with us to the end due to another commitment, but uh, I really do want to hear from you. Um, uh, as the ministry has been working side by side with Kerea and Gogla on this study, how do you intend to utilize the study findings and what insights have been gained from a close collaboration uh, with the private sector? Together with that, you could also let us know, you know, what would be the priorities that you would take up uh, from this particular study? Uh, thank you, Colleen. And uh, it's true we have been close. Uh, I think the study we get uh, several of our officers uh, working together on the three subsectors. The reason for this is uh, when a government makes a decision, uh, then for you to push through uh, uh, some consideration, then you need to do an analysis, you need to give the numbers, you need to show that indeed what you are proposing. Uh, makes uh, some uh, some sense in terms of economic development or social development or otherwise. And therefore, this study is actually going to help us to engage with the National Treasury first. This study is also going to help us to engage with the National Assembly because they have uh, some, uh, uh, some, some role in legislative uh, agenda and we are targeting the, the the, the, the committees which are bearing on this. Uh, indeed, uh, in our, we have already sounded the National Treasury. We did talk to them, uh, but uh, at that time, we did not have the, the other two studies. And the agreement was that before and what we have. And later on, we, when we have the results of the other two studies, we are also going to write to them. Uh, and you see again, the government listens to the industry. The government listens to key stakeholders. So even as we write, we are telling uh, our colleagues in the, in the government that this is a position not only of the Ministry of Energy, but also of the other key stakeholders who are partners in, in the in provision of services uh, and, and essential services for that matter. So we, we need now to prioritize uh, the meeting uh, these key constituencies so that we can be able to engage with them uh, and, and perhaps then be able to influence uh, the right things in the, in the Finance Act 2021. Thank you, for it. Thank you, Engineer Kiva, and um, thank you for, you know, um, that I'm, I'm glad that this report is something that is useful, that provides evidence um going forward even with the engagements with various stakeholders so feel free to keep on to keep hold on to the call as long as you can i'm aware you have another uh launch coming up uh in a few minutes um but uh, feel free to stay with us as long as you can um so i'll just before i get to a second round of questions we had one um question which has been answered i do not see um, any other, um, but I will give just one minute for anyone to raise up their hand and ask um, the panelists uh, or the consultants 
um, specific question, which we will answer and then get uh, to the next round of um, questions uh, before we close. Anyone with a question? Well, as we wait uh, for the questions to come up, uh, I'd like to um, go back to Sneha. Um, how have uh, the members of Kerea adapted to the changes uh, in the introduction of these new um, uh, taxes and what compliance challenges are members facing? Yeah, thank you, Pauline. Um, so yeah, in terms of uh, how the members have adapted, um, uh, of course, there has been no choice. Uh, so yeah, the, the industry has adapted. Initially, there was some confusion in terms of, uh, you know, how things would be treated. Uh, but again, uh, through our uh, working groups, uh, we were able to, you know, share those challenges and uh, where it applied to all of us, we were able to, you know, propose uh, some joint uh, solutions. Um, but, you know, in, in uh, adapting to, uh, to, to, to this uh, new taxes, um, uh, of course, uh, the cash flows of the companies have been affected. Uh, you know, not only in terms of paying the additional taxes, but also, as I said, with the affordability decreasing, um, then the cash collections are less. Um, so, you know, companies have been forced uh, to also resize their their operations. So, you know, many of the members uh, uh, in the second half of uh, last year uh, have had to um, make make some uh, uh, job cuts, uh, which again has uh, has impacted uh, the the economy uh, indirectly. Um, and on, on top of that, uh, there has been other challenges as well, because there's things like minimum tax that uh, have been come, come in. So, you know, those are other compliances um, that uh, we've had to deal with. Um, and the, the other challenge to mention here is, uh, uh, you know, initially um, there was some mobilization of uh, potential support, uh, for example, through the Energy Access uh, Relief Fund. Um, uh, which uh, uh, is still ongoing, but uh, uh, you know, it's, it's quite uh, a prolonged uh, process. So many companies are not uh, directly benefiting from that. Um, and then also as much as, you know, COSAP um, has been a good uh, uh, sort of uh, incentive um, and many companies have uh, mobilized uh, um, uh, all their uh, resources to go and uh, serve the, the underserved counties, which is uh, much more expensive. Uh, but, uh, you know, with the process of dispersing the, the COSAP funds, um, that has uh, been much slower than uh, than ex expected. So, so you know, some of these things, if um, we can use this opportunity to, to get it uh, fast tracked, um, then I think that will help uh, in dealing with uh, some of these uh, challenges, which are uh, largely because of the, the, the taxation issues. Thank you, Sneha. So quite a bit of challenges still part of compliance on the part of um, just adapting the businesses to, uh, to the new reality. Um, of um, with, to dealing with the taxes. So um, now I'd like to, I have found some questions, although they were in the answered, zone, but let me just, um, there's some questions here that I will put to the panel. Um, um, the first one is not so clear, but maybe Ed, you can take a stab at it. Um, the question is, how do these in country uh, economic benefits compare with the countries where these products are imported from. Um, I'm not sure um, um, what um, that might allude to, but maybe uh, Ed, you could take a stab at that. Yeah, it's an interesting question and could be interpreted a few ways. Um, so to take maybe um, a tongue-in-cheek uh, interpretation for, for, for that question could mean um, the economic benefits are just confirmed, uh, calculated on the basis of what a Kenyan household would likely to see in terms of eco economic uplift. If you talk about access to information, information, communication technologies, electricity in a place like the UK, for example, um, that number would be much, much bigger. Um, so if you're talking about what is over the long term, the potential economic gain as a country um, goes on a you know an economic growth path um you know the, the impact of um access to the same types of products and technologies is much much larger what we've done is looking at um uh you know kenyan uh, uh wages and economy today and what impact the impact would be of accessing a solar home system in kenya um uh, based on today's situation um 
I'm not sure if that was what the question was or whether it was more what is the impact on the uh, manufacturers and um, whether the benefits we presented are captured by the consumers or, or, or the companies making the goods. Um, all we presented is, is, the, is the benefits in country and to households. So we, have, we didn't look at um, um, what does this do um, from the perspective of companies who are manufacturing and um, whether it, you know, that's helping them achieve scale. Um, uh, so we didn't we didn't look at that at all because it wasn't um, our perspective was very much um, an energy access uh, question rather than a, um, a sort of a company or corporate scaling question. I'm not sure if either of those answered the question, but um, two attempts. Yeah, thank you, Ed. I wasn't very clear on the question myself, so I might not help. Um, maybe the person who asked the question can um, can just type in and let us know if we tackled it. Um, then we have a question from Mary in Joroge, and um, she says, thank you for the findings. Have these been shared with the ministry or will they be presented after this forum? I'm assuming by ministry here, you, ask, you mean the treasury because the Ministry of Energy was very well represented and a part of the conversation that was happening. Um, looking at the benefits of tax exemptions from the findings, is there near hope of the government reinstating the exemptions. Um, so I don't know if engineer Kiva is still on the call or any of um, um, the others from the ministry, uh, but I'll take a stab at this one. Um, we can only give, do best effort. I don't know whether we can talk about hope of reinstatement. We, in, in if this was say 20, 18, where it was not, where we did not have the COVID um, um, perspective and COVID um, um, reality. Perhaps we would say they hope there is a bigger hope because now we have presented actual evidence that can show, um, you know, how the impact of of taxation is. But we we do recognize that we are with with the COVID pandemic. I don't know that we can talk about hope um, uh, or that we can, you know, give any sort of um, um, hope. Um, yeah, hope. I don't know. Um, but then the findings will definitely, as Engineer Kiva indicated, be shared with the Treasury and will be will form the basis and part basis of um, the advocacy that will be going forward uh, with the National Assembly and um, with the various committees within the, the National Assembly. Um, Patrick, I see you're on. Would you like to also take a stab at that? Um, yes, maybe if I can comment a little bit, because we've been working with uh, Career and all the other partners for the past year on this. I think really from the industry uh, point of view, we think this is really the right, re reintroducing those um, exemptions is the right uh, national interest for Kenya. You look at it from the energy access, Kenya has its own gl uh, global climate change commitments. We think when you look at the uh, jobs enabled, the study hours, everything, um, this really aligns uh, with, with what the national interest is for Kenya. And I think that's really what the case that we can make. Um, I think if, if, you know, in my view that, uh, the, you know, a choice to keep the taxes on would be essentially to say that, uh, you know, a short term, that, that there's a compromise or or, or, or hurting the long-term interest of, of the country saying, okay, we know that their people will be locked out, but you know what, uh, we need, we, that, that doesn't matter for now. So I think um, as in all public policy, the government is, is raising revenue, but the, the, that revenue generation is to both meet its bills and to invest in some uh, uh, national objectives. So we think for us investing in energy access is the right thing for the country. And I think that's what we just keep need to keeping to, to make that clear and heard as at as many places as possible. Thank you, Patrick. Um, so I, I know in the interest of time, we are almost the top of our, our time here, but we will take the two other questions that we have and I will let the panelists just give one last closing remark or one, you know, thing, they, one takeaway they would want to leave us with today. Um, so Grace Rono, your question has been answered live. Uh, your question was around 
taking into account the negative impacts of the tax introduction highlighted in the product. What are the next steps for the ministry having received and reviewed this report? I think engineer Kiva did give an elaborate um, next steps on what the, uh, the plan is. And of course, this plan will also involve all of us as stakeholders uh, as we continue with engagement with the treasury, uh, with the national assembly. Um, and then there's one question, apart from exemptions, KRA as a revenue collector, this is from Imran, uh, they so far contributed to a challenge as far as classification of these products by advising new HS codes that tend to call a higher import tax rate. How will this forum assist us on this? Um, I don't know if Sneha, you want to take a stab at this or Patrick uh, coming more from, um, um, you know, HS codes um, that tend towards um, the higher tax rates. Yeah, so Pauline, uh, I also re responded in the chat. So, you know, we we had uh, such uh, uh, requests uh, earlier and uh, as, we, as we know, the at least uh, the small home systems working group is quite uh, active on this uh, and uh, you know we can uh, share some expert uh, experiences so yeah my request to Imran is just to address that uh, to the carrier administrator and we'll take it from there thank you uh thank you Sleha. um so one last question from naomi um uh, she says i'm happy with the impact findings on the fiscal incentives to create enabling uh, investment opportunities. Have we looked into the specific incentives we would be proposing? If yes, what are these? Um, so there are recommendations, and I will also defer a little bit to Ed to, to answer this. There are recommendations on the findings. So their analysis was, uh, has there been an economic impact? Uh, and really not so much what are the specific incentives that would be proposed um, um, in, by, um, through this study. But I will just let Ed just uh, speak into this uh, specific question. And Ed, as you do so, once you have completed, please give us your parting shot and I will go around to each of the other um, members of the panel. Thank you. Sounds good. I'll, I, I think I'll do both at once. Um, I mean, so this study was looking specifically at whether, you know, what is the case for um, VAT and or import duty exemptions. Um, and the short answer is from, from, from a pure sort of cost benefit analysis perspective, that there, there is clearly a, a case to justify both um, VAT exemptions probably more urgently uh, and more directly um, within the control of, of, of Kenyan authorities. Um, Beyond that, um, and does that, you know, if, if those are in place, that certainly up, uh, opens up opportunities. Um, beyond that, I think I'd echo some of um, um, what Sneha has referred to, I think, as well, um, which is um, VAT and input duty exemptions um, are needed to support growth of uh, and access to standalone solar products throughout the country. Um, but that's not the end of the game. And obviously, we haven't talked about things like COSAP today um, and other very targeted incentives that are needed to um, both help um, uh, provide working capital for the PAYGO business model, um, but also to, as, as, as another um, question I think alluded to, really reach those uh, hardest to reach customers that are the most expensive and have the, the, the lowest ability to pay. Um, and so I think VAT and import duty exemptions exemptions are a good place to start, um, but reinforcing those with very targeted incentives to reach specific target populations as well would be um, my parting shot. Thank you, Ed. Um, really appreciate your, um, your participation here today. Um, Patrick, parting shot. Yes, uh, yes, thank you. I think for me, um, we need, when, when we think about the global conversation that is happening right now, um, around SDG 7 and the need to make sure that you reach, you don't leave anybody behind. The, you know, the conversation is, and, and recognition from private sector is, we cannot reach everybody. Um, and, and the sector will need some type of end user support uh, and other fiscal support so that we, we bring and make uh, it affordable for a consumer, regardless of income level uh, to afford an, a modern energy product. And this is something that we are all wrestling about the models to be able to reach them. 
And I think any action that a government takes uh, in this case that adds cost instead of reducing the cost go really goes against the grain of both the energy access agenda, their own national objectives and, 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 and priorities. And also when you think about what this study is really showing that the broader economic impact and inclusive development uh, that would be enabled, which far supersedes any um, revenue generation. I think th this is something we need to go back to. And, and I think this is the call I think in Kenya would be um, to, to, to really look back again at what are the instruments that you should be adopting to increase affordability, to make sure that the communities that who are left behind can both access uh, a modern energy product around them in terms of the supply or distribution support, as well as the price support. Um, we, when we look at the main grid, there are some you know, support and, and subsidies that reach grid customers and what should be done to, to reach off-grid customers, whether you're on a mini grid, you're a standalone system, or you're accessing a clean energy product. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Um, and uh, Sneha, your parting shot. Yeah, thanks, uh, Pauline. Um, so just to say that, uh, you know, uh, as a community, uh, there's a lot of work uh, that we've mobilized in the uh, past few months, uh, which, you know, we need to continue with. And, you know, this uh, report uh, really, you know, adds to the ammunition. Um, and, you know, we, we've lobbied with uh, all the parliamentary committees, including the Energy Committee and the Finance Committee. Um, and, and just to remind everybody, the, the, the stance of the, the Finance Committee uh, was that they, they justified the, um, the, the removal of the exemption, uh, saying uh, that, uh, you know, uh, it would make the local uh, production uh, uh, more uh, uncompetitive. Uh, and I, I would urge you know uh, all of us to be realistic uh, because uh, when we look at local manufacturing, um, there's not first of all not many companies doing it. There's probably one or two companies had who had tried it and but who have you know sort of retreated back. Uh, and and you know let, let's be realistic. We cannot uh, you know at, at this stage uh, our country cannot be uh, competitive with the Far East in terms of the sophistication and the low cost uh, production. So you know let, let's not use that as an excuse. Uh, to to kill, for example, things like uh, uh, further uh, jobs growth, uh, and you know deprive the, the the needy from having access to to you know these uh, necessities. So you know let, let's also uh, fight back on 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 that kind of uh, justification given. Thank you very much, Neha, um, and thank you all. Thank you all for uh, for joining us uh, this afternoon. Um, I really want to appreciate Engineer Kiva, uh, who could not stay on the call. They had uh, another engagement at four o'clock. I thank him for his time and engagement even with the principal secretary uh, on this matter and as also indicated with the cabinet secretary. So this is a matter that is at the core of um, the sector and continues to be at the core of the Sector. And I just want to pick up from what Sneha was saying. Um, in previous times, as we've engaged, we've engaged on uh, uh, on the basis of this, uh, you know, um, introduction of taxes is not a good thing. But over time, we now have evidence to show that really uh, it is going to impact um, the greater economy more uh, by a short term gains through um, uh, tax, um, imposition of tax on the standalone solar. So I, I'd like to just, you know, pick up from his appeal and all those who are on the call today, it will take everyone, uh, everyone's effort, concerted effort uh, to continue this. Um, it's, it's going to be for a long haul. Um, and um, as a staff, we, uh, we, we are really grateful and privileged that we're able to bring um, evidence that the uh, sector can use uh, going forward for advocacy as far as um, tax exemptions are concerned. So I want to thank my panel as well, Sneha, thank you, Ed, thank you, uh, Patrick. 
um, for the very lively discussion. Thank you for the questions that were posted. Believe that they were very well ably answered. Um, thank you for the Gogla team working together with the ASTAF team um, to put this together. Um, the information like uh, we have indicated, the reports are available both um, on the Gogla website as well as the ASTAF uh, website. Uh, and you can go and download those and use them and uh, and and um, you know use them as the basis on which you 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 know you carry on with um, advocacy. I also want to acknowledge uh, Kirago who also presented for us uh, and Mary um, and um, so thank you all. Uh, I also want to point to you if you're operating outside of Kenya and also grappling with the question of tax and tax exemptions and the impact, we do also have a study that was, uh, that has also just been launched uh, that is looking at Malawi, Rwanda and Sierra Leone. Uh, and in this study, there is um, a toolkit uh, that is part of it that uh, enables government officers to, to just look at the various uh, scenarios that they can work with as far as uh, taxation is concerned. So with that, I want to thank you also for all of you who have stayed on the call, continue to engage with us, continue to engage with Gogla, with A staff, with Career, um, and any other questions, you can post them to us um, after this uh, and, uh, and we will be sure to get back to you. Um, on that note, I uh, wish you all a good morning, afternoon, evening, and we look forward to engaging further on this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pauline. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Pauline. Thanks, everyone.